Welcome back to the Acoustic Shop channel. I am John here today to hang out with my good buddy, Jeremy. We're not only buddy, you're like a brother to me. You're really. almost like a brother. Anyway, we're gonna get Jeremy to do something a little bit. He's less comfortable with this, but he does a mighty fine job with guitars. We're actually gonna be talking about this is something. a guitar? Yeah, this, <laughs> believe it or not, that is a guitar. Doesn't it feel weird to have something, uh, you know, the foreign, full and great, great sounding, you know? Hmm, yep. Anyway, <laughs> what are we doing today? We're gonna do a shootout between these we two guitars. We are gonna do a shootout. We're, we're talking get, about mahogany. We get this question a lot. We're gonna talk about rosewood versus mahogany, and we're gonna do a shootout for you right after this. So we have two identical guitars, Jeremy. They're not except, identical. Well, they're identical, but they're not. I was going to say that. I said, except, and then you stopped me. Well, you started with, we have two identical <laughs> guitars. We have two nearly identical guitars. Nearly identical. You, thanks for clearing that up. This is uh, two Boucher these guitars. These are paternal. They're paternal twins. They're paternal twins. Um, these are the BG series. This is a BG42 GM and a BG2, a BG 52 GM. Now, I'm gonna go through all the different letters and what they mean here real quick. BR549. BR549. Um, the BG, in this particular case, comes uh, for Boucher. This is how they... Uh, uh, way, boy, no, this, BGs? It's not that BGs. Oh. <clears throat> this is how they delineate their bluegrass goose. Now, the bluegrass, uh, goose, bluegrass is, goose yeah, is a setup, a little bit higher setups. Uh, they have an inch and three quarter nut width and are kind of voiced a little bit more towards the standard uh, bluegrassy tone. Um, so these are both BGs, and not your BGs, but they're both <laughs> BGs. Um, the 42 uh, versus the 52, that that stands for 42 is a dreadnought guitar with mahogany back and sides and an Adirondack spruce top. The 52, which I am holding, is a exactly like that, except it has a rosewood back and sides and an Adirondack spruce top. The G stands for gold pack, which they do all their stuff in packs. The gold pack usually means gold plated tuners, even though these don't have it. Um, but that means a thermo cured top, uh, which gives that gold color that you see here. Uh, the M stands for master grade. So when they do the master, that's when they add the abalone rosette. They use master grade Adirondack spruce instead of the quadruple A uh, grade, which makes for a more uh, even across uh, look as well as performance on the master grade tops. And that's where we bring back our nickel hardware uh, on this. And they also add that B uh, at the 12th fret for Boucher. Uh, on the master pack. So those are kind of the, the numbers. Other than that, these are identical guitars, except for the rosewood versus mahogany, which is why we have them in here, because perfect match, we can hear the difference between rosewood and mahogany. It's probably one of the most uh, asked questions in the shop. You probably hear it a bunch. I know I hear it all the time. So that be, what is the difference like between With Martin, it would be the D18 and D28. Correct. Um, are there other differences between the D28 and D18? There are some appointment differences. Like the, and I think yeah, that's why this finding. is a better matchup because the appointments on these are exactly the same. They both have coal wood binding. Uh, they both, you know, have the same uh, a mahogany neck. Have, you know, none of the extra frills that go from an 18 to a 28. Um, or you know, no herring bone brands, and, and that yeah, sort of herring thing. bones and all that kind of stuff. So this was actually, I thought, a really good way to kind of match this up so you could hear the differences. And I always love going on online forums. You know why? Because everybody is an expert on a guitar forum. On I have any never, forum online. On any forum. I have never found that I've got onto a thread where I didn't have one guy on there who's like, yes, I have, this is the way it is. They all sound like this. They all do this. They, uh, guess what? That doesn't equate in the real world. Uh, as much as we all want to say, this is exactly what a rosewood sounds like and this is exactly what a mahogany sounds like, I can always find alternatives for that and variances and all kinds of changes. So uh, we're gonna do our best to try to get a made it up deal and even still 
your experience may vary on this, uh, but this is going to kind of get some generalities to that. So, so in, in your experience, what does the rosewood lend itself more towards versus mahogany? So if I, the question always, yeah, what you just said is... It's a pairing. Uh, it's like a, if you're like a sommelier and I'm saying, I want to have pork tonight, what wine should I have with that? <laughs> so if we're all going with the specific, uh, the same exact style of guitar, which is shapes. We've already gone through that whole discussion. Now we talk tone woods. Um, and what you're saying is exactly right. In general, I tend to pair up a player that plays rhythm most of the time, strums and that kind of stuff, with str strumming and singing with a rosewood guitar. In general, I tend to take a more lead player, somebody who plays lead guitar like solos me. a lot more, like Jeremy, <laughs> with mahogany. And here's why. Um, so you can hear that definition of those clear <laughs> notes. <laughs> there is a difference in response and how the uh, sound reflects off the back and sides in these two instruments. Rosewood, to me, tends to have a little bit more low end, a tighter low end. It is a, uh, you know, a more defined, rich low end, uh, and just has a little bit more kind of, of fills that a room a little filling bit tone, exactly. Where mahogany tends to respond to the player a little bit more, especially as, on the back side of the guitar, you tend to hear that punchiness, but even more so on the front end of the guitar, the mid range is more pronounced. It pops out there and kind of jumps out a little bit more. And we all know that the downside of guitars is they're in a frequency range that is less audible to most people's human ear, especially in a group setting. So that extra help of the mid-range and highs in mahogany Adds tends a little note to definition, note definition, clarity. Yeah, exactly, clarity. Especially That's speed. a great word I think when it. you're talking about speed, it's almost like the uh, rosewood, because it is so filling and stuff, it has more resonance that, that kind of almost overpowers the next note, where this one seems a little bit more precise and, and quick. Mm -hmm. So a fast player, it seems like the note definition is a little bit clearer on mahogany. I, I would. I, that's exactly the way I would define that. So again, Jeremy... So we could cut the other part. And yeah, just go straight to it. Jeremy knows the actual deals. Jeremy, you should be a guitar player. No, I just, I just analyze it. <laughs> anyway, um, and that's usually my pairing and what my opinions on this. Again, you can go on any forum. I guarantee you. Now back to my over first time, question with pork we chops. We will do this with pork chops. I tend to prefer uh, maple a pork? actually. <laughs> uh, these are the two most popular tone woods for uh, guitars. I think the next most popular would be maple, and then we have you know all the various Coas different koas and cocobolos and, and all that kind of stuff. But this by far is the most common two tone woods that you will see paired up. Um, so, with that said, what we're going to do today is we're going to play both of these guitars. You're going to play both these guitars. Well, I'm going to try way, We're to not play. saying it's the player. It's the same player. going to play both guitars back to back, splicing and out of them so mm -hmm. you can hear on the fly what is the difference on fast lead, what is it on the rhythm, mm -hmm. and then get a... That's probably the best way because it... I hope I, so. I, I always, personally, even though I play music for all these years, to play an instrument, set it down, and go pick up another one. Just that little time between those two, it's really hard to hear the distinct you difference. You lose some of those things. Where in the studio, listening. we found you can just splice back and forth, and your ear can just instantly hear that difference. So uh, it's the same thing with color and all that. But with sound, this is a great way to show you what a rhythm might sound like on a mahogany guitar versus a rosewood, and the same for some of your faster lead picking. Sure. So what? before I do that, I do want to go over quickly the specs on both of these guitars so you know exactly how close they are in a match, and that's why we chose them. Um, this is a BG52GM, has a thermo-cured Adirondack spruce top, koa wood bindings, a uh, ebony bridge, ebony fretboard. These are both inch and three quarters, not that you're going to hear that, but uh, you will definitely know that that is the spec. Uh, mahogany neck, uh, like I said, the only major bone difference in into this bone nut and saddle is going to be rosewood, where that one has the exact same specs I just said, coal wood binding, mahogany back insides. So these are truly a really good match uh, for each other. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna try to get this spliced together. Hopefully you will be able to hear it and then you can tell us what you think. Thank you. 
Well, there you have it, Jeremy. That is the difference between rosewood and mahogany, as probably as close as you can get it. Now, again, I have heard bigger differences between two different guitars, but these were so closely matched. Um, it was, you know, is a really kind of good way to compare the two. Uh, I hope you guys could hear the difference. I don't know if you did. If you did, please put that down in the comments below. Tell us what you thought. Um, and speaking of that, you know what we didn't talk about is if you do enjoy these videos, please do like and subscribe. Uh, that way you get to hear it's more of these kind of demos. If you don't enjoy it, like and subscribe just well, to see if we get better. Yeah. Um, and then, then you can also put in all the comments, like, yeah. you know, interact with us. These guys are awful. Right. The uh, They wouldn't know the difference between... Uh, Rose wood and mahogany yeah or something like that anyway. so ultimately <laughs> if i was to get my choice i would play all my leads i'd grab the mahogany guitar switch to it and do and then i'd get ready to sing and do rhythm i'd just switch it out funny you stage. should say that there was actually a, a famous guitar player uh, clarence white who kind of sort of did that same deal he had a d18 and a t28 both loved them both and when he would usually play instrumental tunes he would always grab his mahogany guitar when he was playing more of the bluegrass uh, uh, standards and singing and playing, tended to prefer his D28. Um, Ultimately, I, I think if you could get the MTV guitar that, <laughs> that was, Martin that made. That was such a very weird guitar. They had like the three-piece back, guys, one strip of was mahogany, and the rest was it? No, it was half was, and a half. Actually, okay. if you get a chance to look that one up, they made an MTV unplugged guitar. The top half back and sides were rosewood, the bottom half were mahogany, or vice versa, I can't remember, but it was half and half. The weirdest thing I've ever seen. I highly do not recommend <laughs> anybody build that guitar ever again, unless you have one of those. A then, of both uh, I hope you love that guitar. It was a, a, a fantastic choice out there. Um, that said, uh, you know, your opinions on what you heard, what the differences were. Yeah, I think it just basically reinforced what we were saying, where there's a little more clarity and punch, I think, with the mahogany, and just a little more fullness and room filling effect with the uh, rosewood. I. I have great mahogany guitars that have, I mean, all of us are looking for the pairing of both. You want to hear the great rhythm, solid low end, um, and you also need that uh, punch in mid-range. I tend to find that more often than not out of a really good selected uh, mahogany guitar for me, because I do need that, I, I need more of the lead stuff than I need of the rhythm stuff, so if I can get close to there. That said, a great rhythm guitar with rosewood back and sides is almost impossible to beat for myself. I just find that to be, you know, the essential sound for when I was doing that. So, um, you know, I did hear when I was playing it, there is a little bit more bounce back to the uh, mahogany guitar to me as a player, uh, where I think the rosewood, again, projects more forward and really kind of gets that uh, tone there. So there is a kind of a uh, response back to the player a little bit more so with mahogany. But again, it all comes down to what you're needing as a guitar player. I, there's no wrong answer to this. There just is no, no wrong answer. You need to this. one of each. I have great rosewood guitars. I have great mahogany guitars, and I wouldn't trade any of them. Well, I would if you get me a better rosewood and or a better. Always mahogany. looking for better, aren't you? Always. <laughs> always. Anyway, thank you guys so much, and we'll see you in the next video.
And we really appreciate you guys watching that video. It was my favorite it's one we've made so far. We, we've done hundreds of videos, and that was the best one. It was. And the next one's gonna be even better. If you'd like to see that, <laughs> be sure you subscribe to this channel. And also, the more you comment and inter interact below, the more the YouTube algorithms pick it up and start pushing it out to other people, like-minded people. Algorithms? Algorithms, they're everywhere. They permeate the internet, and YouTube's got one. And it watches our videos, and it sees how much you comment, and then it pushes us to other people like you. And we want everyone to experience the acoustic shop world where we talk about instruments, we do reviews, we got some fun videos coming up. We thank you guys so much for being a part of it and we'll see you in the next video.